Thank you very much, Juve. Uh, let me just take uh, this first moment to say I'm very happy to have this opportunity today. I'm very grateful for the organizers of this very interesting and very wonderful initiative network, 2025 network. So I've been really looking forward to tonight. It's actually evening here in Denmark, Copenhagen. I haven't been sp speaking a lot of English uh, lately, so please forgive me if I have to search a bit for the words. I may sound a bit more stupid than I'm actually uh, that I actually am, but we'll see about that. As Uffe mentioned, we are part of that same group, the Center for for Life Center that I mentioned. But I uh, I'm also part of a a small company uh, that I run mostly with my wonderful wife Charlotte. Uh, which up until very recently was named uh, Soul Therapy, named after a, a special self-development technique we found in the works of Usil Sidokrans. To be more precise, it's taken from the monumental work called Nature of the Soul, page 107-108 in the English uh, edition, if you want to have the exact, exact page number. What we do is we uh, integrate healing and meditation-based therapy. We discovered that using especially this soul therapy technique, we had the opportunity to get our clients and ourselves as well into a state of mind with a bit more surplus, a bit more um, capabilities uh, to see clearly, to sense clearly as well the obstacles we have, uh, blockages in our energy system, but also in our mindset, in our consciousness. And, uh, and ever since we've been utilizing visualization techniques and different uh, mm. meditation techniques, uh, every time we have a, we have a client or have a, a class when we uh, when we do some some education programs or something like that. Uh, just this uh, January first, we changed our name to Essence, which is a new website. You can see it's it's the Danish spelling of the of the word Essence, Essence.org, uh, and we did that because we had a lot of feedback from people thinking feeling that. So therapy sounded a bit too purple and a bit too new agey for their taste. So in order to try to reach a bit broader, we, we, we changed the name uh, quite recently, but, but we're still very much working with the soul therapy techniques. I am also a part of a, a, a quite wonderful group, I feel, uh, called Center of Life's Inner Dimensions, which Ufa is also a part of. And, Uwe is now going to show a, a lot of pictures from uh, from the the farm we call uh, the elf farm or something like that. Directly translated, it sounds a bit better in Danish, I guess. What we have been doing in that group uh, for many years now is uh, we have been offering presentations. It's all volunteer work. Uh, we have been offering presentations, courses, and and. Uh, different educational programs in meditation and self-development, healing, astrology, and maybe especially in esoteric philosophy. And um, in the past years, it, our work has been very much based on uh, the esoteric school run by Niels Bronsted, my old father, uh, who integrated the works of uh, theosophy Back from all the way back from uh, Helena uh, Blavatsky, Petrovna Blavatsky, but also the esoteric teachings by Bailey and 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 in the later years uh, the teachings by Sirakrans as well. What is going on for the has been going on for the last couple of years uh, mostly is that Niels has withdrawn more and more. He's an elderly uh, man uh, recently turned 75 and is now not an active part of the, the group work anymore. And uh, instead of him, 
uh, we are now a group which is more uh, working in a different way, more based on younger people. In this be uh, in this business, younger people are <laughs> between 40 and 50. Uh, mostly, we have Ufa is, is is not 40 yet, but but most most of us are in in, in uh, something like that in the 40s, uh, and we are working in a different way as well. We are working much more what we in a, in a way we may uh, call experiential. We work more sort of you know by introducing different uh, meditation techniques and perspectives uh, instead of. Uh, Sort of presenting a, a whole world of view, a more a very esoteric, ideological based uh, world of view. It's it's much more on the base of workshops, of meditation uh, exercises, and and things like that. And uh, so so we're very much ch changing into a more we might call it a Krayan way of working. So uh, that's what I'm going to touch upon just briefly, just in order to sort of set the frame for tonight's uh, meditation exercise that I will uh, use most of the time we spend together doing, uh, apart from obviously leading the full moon meditation. Um, as many of you probably know, we uh, according to the t esoteric uh, teachings, anyway, we are moving from the Piscean age to to the Aquarian age. We are sort of somewhere in the middle of that transition, I guess we could call it. Pro it probably has not culminated yet, but it, it's also not totally in the beginning stages uh, anymore. And Following that, we are also moving what we sort of in a very broad perspective call a race six dominance for those of you familiar to uh, to the seven rays and uh, what they represent, the race six, uh, which we very often uh, label the, the ray of idealism and uh, devotion and moving much more into a race seven dominance uh, coming in with the Aquarian energies. These energies are many different energies, and not all of them on the on the race seven, of course. But but it sort of it's 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 a more race seven ish energy climate that we're moving into. Race seven is also what we label the the ray of ceremonial order and magic, which is a, maybe a, a bit weird way of of defining it for some. Uh, we could also call it it's very much the ray of natural organizing. Uh, maybe maybe we could even label it as the ray of organizing in the in the image of nature itself. And that transition of energies has a lot of implications and many of you are maybe much more into these implications than I am so I'm just touching briefly uh, about them. Uh, in terms of self-development, which I, I deal with on a daily basis, uh, uh, and maybe also in terms of the way we look at ourselves, we could call it the self-image we have uh, all the time, there, there are some major, major shifts uh, going on. In the Piscean age, it was much more natural for us to have a preoccupation with our past, thinking about our karmic past and very often talking about it in a way of, you know, a huge burden that we drag along with us from previous incarnations where we were thieves and murderers and so on. So it was uh, it was very much, you, you could call it a self-image self and, and, and also an approach to self-development based upon the many mistakes that we have done and uh, obviously, also the whole sort of Christian uh, epoch for the last couple of thousands of years, where we are taught that we are mostly sinners, trying to enter, uh, uh, trying to enter the heavens uh, through, you know, devotion and, and sacrifice and so on. With the inflow of the Aquarian energies, we 
see a different tendency. We, we tend to be more focused on the present, to some extent to, uh, on the future, with a more natural, positive outlook, and also a very sort of practical relationship to ourselves. Many of you can probably sense that as well, I hope. We tend to crave a very practical understanding, and we we are much more after techniques and practical perspectives and good advice than a more coherent ideological view of the world as we, as I touched upon uh, briefly a few minutes ago. We also seem to be forming groups and group work network as the one we are part of right now uh, in, in a very natural way. But maybe we should also be aware that a downside to those same energies is that it also uh, brings it brings in its opposition. Uh, there's a very notable move uh, to watch more selfishness, egoism, especially found in many of the younger generations. I think I was actually also a very big egoist in my young years, maybe, <laughs> maybe I still am, but it, it seems to be more sort of uh, outspoken. Uh, many of the younger generations today makes makes absolute try to hide that they just want to be in the center of attention and want to be famous, not necessarily for something they do or uh, good at. Uh, and a lot of uh, traits, maybe traits like loyalty, perseverance, and taking responsibility are simply considered old school and not very relevant uh, anymore for for, for many people today. So that, that are some of the energies also coming in very much, very strongly from Aquarius that we need to be mindful of, I think, in a way. Uh, so just to make that point very simple, you could say that the same energies uh, that we're told will bring about uh, world circles in great numbers that Aquarius should create will also bring the opposite. So the direct opposite to a world server must be an ego server or someone serving him or herself, I guess. So that's really what we what we need to be aware of, those tendencies in ourselves, but also uh, surrounding us. Okay, so that was, uh, that was simply a, a few introductory remarks, uh, just sort of setting the frame. Now I, I would like to move on and, uh, and uh, introduce the meditation exercise that I, I want to take us through today. So I hope you're all in very good meditative shape because we are doing two meditations in a, in, in a, in a short time here today. I, I, I hope that one just, maybe we, maybe we can see the first one as a warm up to the, to the full moon meditation. Uh, in, uh, in a bit. The meditation that I'm introducing today, I, I had a lot of thoughts about what we should do and I, my, my initial thought was to do sort of a, some kind of therapeutic process, but uh, uh, immediately a very uh, ethical problem arises. Is it safe to do that over the internet with people sitting in different places all over the world? And, uh, and uh, very quickly I, I thought to myself, that's probably not a good idea to do. What I thought of doing instead is a meditation which could also be seen to be much more in line with uh, this energy climate that I just uh, claimed to be uh, flowing in from Aquarius. Uh, it's, a, it's a meditation exercise that we use with the clients who come in and seek to have a deeper understanding of their own deeper inner resources. And it's a very good place to start if, if we are still in doubt of what we actually have in there, deep in our chest and deep in our consciousness, in our soul. It's, it's a very good idea to spend some time exploring that, uh, those resources. And I, th I, I think that, that goes well in line with, with this uh, this energy climate that we focus much more on our strength, on our resources, and identify with those, and 
having done that, we will be much better able to work uh, through our blockages, to work, work off any limitations that might be in the hindrance of our uh, daily work, preferably a daily work that is of some use, <laughs> uh, of some service to other people. I think that that probably counts for most of us, if not all of us. I sincerely hope so, and I believe so. So that is what we're going to do. We are trying to do a small meditation exercise which will help us sort of drop into our own inner uh, a, a place within ourselves where we can just exploit how we feel and uh, what it's like to be there. And there's a twist to that meditation uh, exercise, but if I reveal that now, I'll sort of ruin the whole uh, exercise. So please bear with me. That will uh, I, I, I will reveal that along the way. But it it has to do with this whole problem that those of us not not coming from from the United States anyway, those of us from the conservative old European countries, we tend to have a problem with just sort of acknowledging and putting words to what we're really, really good at. We, we are maybe too humble in some ways and, and, and uh, not good enough to assert that. So this exercise helps us, you know, not doing it in, in that way, but just sort of to surrender to, uh, to our, our deepest inner resources in a, in a very simple way, I hope you feel. Enough of that. I, I'm, if I hype this exercise too much, you will all be very disappointed. So I'll I'll, uh, I'll leave it at that. Okay, so let's prepare for a small meditation. I think this uh, this whole part of the meditation shouldn't take more than 20, 25 minutes, something like that. So please just sit and relax and. Uh, Find a position that is comfortable to sit in for the for the next 20 or 25 minutes. Thank you. I will guide you every step of the way so you don't have to do anything but just to tackle along and uh, I hope you have a good experience. Please take a, a few deep breaths and just breathe in calmness, poise, breathe out any blockages, any tensions you might have. This is to find that each of us is not a nation. So, what we have to do, a couple of things that we feel very safe in, and that is full of energy. Just take a few minutes to let the calm rhythm of the surrounding nature very gradually, very slowly just vibrating into your bodily system and to your consciousness, creating a very calm Poised, steady rhythm.
Now we visualize that we are gazing at the sun, slowly locking our whole awareness into looking at the sun. Remember when we do this visualization, we will not damage your eyes or anything like that. I try to sense that it is as if the sun is looking back at us. Someone or something in the periphery of the sun is inviting us to join. Maybe even calling our name. And I'll just like to invite all of us just to let us be drawn towards the sun, gradually sensing its bright light flowing through us, its warmth flowing through us, and its ever-present life flowing through us as we approach it. Sun already seems to be close. We see a smiling face. It seems very familiar. Move all the way into periphery of the sun, connecting with the smiling face blinded by the strong light. Just move further into the sun, still being guided. The sun does not feel fiery or overly hot, it just feels warm and nice. Maybe a bit like sitting in front of a fireplace after having been out in the cold winter. We start to sense that we are being taken into the heart of the sun. Visualize that as a bit more golden, a bit darker light. In here, we try to sense that heart energy. It is not by any means a sentimental energy. It's a very clear, but also very, very inclusive energy. We try to sense that quality for a few minutes.
Now in this energy we create or visualize our own inner home. Some of us may already have such a place. And we can just visualize that for the rest of us. What I'm talking about is visualizing a nice spot in nature or a house or something that we feel very at home in. But please do not replicate any physical surroundings you know very well or have feelings about. Don't make an inner impression of your house or something like that. It would be preferable to be something different from our daily surroundings. So we just take a few minutes to visualize this place that we feel at home in. hope we have all familiarized ourselves with this place now. So now I would like to invite us all to just be in those surroundings and for the next couple of minutes try to, try to recognize or register any sensations that you might have and Perhaps more importantly, try to recognize any states of consciousness, any qualities that you feel. It may be love, it may be serenity, it may be any number of qualities that we sense in this place. And every time you register such a quality, please make a mental note of that quality.
Okay. I'm going to stop you there for a minute. Some of you may be experiencing symbols or different kinds of messages or something like that. By all means, bring them with you, but for the moment, put them aside a bit, please. Now, I'd like you just to ask yourself, let's just say, for example, that one of you may have experienced qualities like clarity, like joy. You may be playfulness and ask yourself have I ever received the feedback that I inspired joy playfulness clarity in other people or invoke the, those qualities in other people? Have I ever had the feedback that people felt like that after being with us, with me? It's a bit clumsy instruction, but I hope you got the gist of it. So please ask yourself about any mental notes you have made about different qualities you've just experienced, ask yourself, have I ever expressed those qualities? Have I had that feedback from other people? For the last part of this exercise, before gradually moving back, try to identify these qualities. I hope and I believe that every one of us has now present qualities we have just experienced. Try for a minute to identify with them. Back to the example, if I experience clarity, then I, did, then I will identify myself with being clear in my mind. Maybe even in my, when I speak. Communicate. And so on.
just be mindful of the fact that every one of us contains different energies, different traits, some of them may express as shortcomings, some of them as resources, skills and so on. But be sure that if we do not define who we are, if we do not choose which of these energies, which of these traits we see as most fundamentally expressing who we are, other parts of us will choose for us. And those parts, parts of our subconscious, are usually not very kind and loving. They are usually very demanding, making us, making sure that in order to protect us, they have a positive agenda, is my deep conviction. But they are trying to make us all the way stay out of trouble by reminding of us of all our shortcomings, by reminding of us of all our failures. So if we do not actively use our will and mind to decide that we will identify with other parts of ourselves, inner parts, deeper parts, more central parts of ourselves, then that is usually the self-image we have, a, a, a pretty negative, pretty inferior self-image we have. So I invite and encourage all of us to instead choose to identify with who we are when we are in our deepest inner places, when we are in that center of our being that we have hopefully just visited and identified with. So that is the gist of this meditation practice. I will lead us out of it and just share a few more remarks about it before opening for questions and comments. So hopefully filled with these resources, we simply get ready to leave our inner place if it's a place we'd like to revisit, then by all means decide to do so any time in the future. And we just gradually move out this place into the broader realm of the sun from where we enter. as we just let ourselves sort of float from the heart of the sun to the periphery of the sun we come into our intuition flowed out of the realm of the sun and for a minute just flowing there before entering the atmosphere of planet Earth among the stars we come into our abstract mind bringing clarity and the evoking qualities We flow into the 
atmosphere flowing in the clear blue sky. Let's just come into our concrete mental sphere, bringing stillness, clarity, vision. Looking down upon the blue planet and all the water, big seas, we come into our emotional energy, bringing harmony, balance, and clarity. Transparent might be a better word. Let's feel and we float down towards firm ground, coming into our all vital or etheric energy field bringing lots and lots of inner vitality and a steady rhythmic flow we bring with us into our cellular body as we land firmly on the ground from where we took off somewhere nature And we just move back to the chair that we sit in, or however situated we are, lying down, or whatever. whatever. We just release our awareness. Just a few more remarks on the exercise we just did before opening up to uh, to a dialogue or whatever the right word is for, for how this is, is working, is that for those of you who felt that this exercise might be uh, relevant, have some use, I would strongly encourage you to do it a number of times, at least 20 times, or maybe we should say at least 21 times. Uh, and every time you do it, Please make a note of all the qualities that you register. Sometimes maybe there's, you don't get there and there's no qualities <laughs> present but, and that's fine. But every time you have a successful take at this exercise, I would strongly encourage you to write down any qualities that you may experience. And I assure you, if you do this exercise 20 or 30 times, a, a, a pattern will emerge. It will not just be sort of the energies uh, flowing through you any given time that defines who you are. Uh, certain qualities will go will, will, will be present maybe not every time but a lot of the times. So maybe I'll have a list of having done the exercise 30 times I'll have a list of maybe I don't know, 15 or 20 different qualities and, uh, and maybe a quality like love or inclusiveness or something like that might, might have been noted 24 times or something like that. Then, then you can be sure that that is a core quality of your being. That's our experience of it anyway. The sort of the trick that we are utilizing is obviously a philosophical assumption that you may agree with or disagree with is that we can only experience our true inner self through qualities already 
expressed by ourselves. So if I had absolutely no love in me or clarity, which was the example I gave during the exercise a number of times, is I, if I have absolutely no clarity in me, I will never experience that quality, simply. I will experience maybe a number of other qualities, but not clarity, and so on. So, so that's the assumption that what we sense, what we feel, and, and I, I hope that you will more sort of try to make it a sensory uh, type of, uh, of meditation more than, you know, thinking about who I am and what kind of qualities I might have or what kind of feedback I had. Just be in the moment and, and be in your place and enjoy it and let whatever comes out of it come into your, your being. And what we have done with the, and I'm still doing, I, I'm doing this, uh, this as, as a part of a, a, a part of an unfoldment pro, uh, process, is that this is, uh, this can be seen as one of the, or maybe the f first stage of refocusing or re-identifying. Uh, and then just let it be sort of a very uh, abstract process in the beginning. Don't direct it into any specific areas of life. Don't try to force any, any uh, thoughts around what you want to do with your life or what kind of, what line of work you want to go into if, if you do this process. Let this sort of marinate and work for a month or two and then we could gradually start to sort of look out, be more practical about it. That's that's how we usually work with it. And, we, and if we give it enough time in the beginning, the foundation that we will proceed with, uh, proceed on, maybe, maybe is the right word, will be very sort of sound and very uh, sustainable. So, yeah, that, that was uh, my remarks about it. I hope you enjoyed this little exercise. And now I hope that Ufe will uh, master everything and, uh, and uh, I am open to any kind of impressions that you would like to share from, from this small exercise or questions uh, that you might have or maybe, maybe you were bored uh, a lot and you are very, very welcome to state that as well or make any other comments as well. Yes, so so you can put up your hand, you can press the button that that has a hand on it, and then I will unmute you and you can ask your question or do your sharing directly to everybody. Um, I see Martin Martin Deezer has a just a, a comment. He's, he says it's a lovely exercise, particularly because it does not place striving at the center of the work, but rather attempts to approach to our inner dimensions via the heart. Mm. And Jan also says this was very helpful. So please also, if anybody wants to say something out loud, we can unmute you and you can ask your questions. Um, I have a question, uh, Mass. Uh, if mm -hmm. sure. you say, if, for example, you, you see one of these uh, qualities that, that I really would like to identify with, do you have any good ideas or hints as how to make it a more permanent part of myself? How, uh, what is a good way to to sort of anchor this? Yeah, yeah, a very good question. Yes, uh, what what we um, suggest that people people do is that they take a lot of time registering all the different parts of them uh, which this quality affects. That that means that say uh, say I. I had this sense of uh, maybe empathy. Let's let's say a, a quality like empathy. 
say it, say I had a, a strong sense of that quality. I, it, I I would suggest that you do perhaps the same exercise and then be very uh, open to register what does that do to my body? Is it specific parts of my body that I sense this this energy, this quality, and mostly the specific senses, for instance? Uh, it could also be that it does something specifically to my emotions, my em emotional field, my, my mind field. Uh, try to be very open to register it in, in any way that you can. So you really deeply sort of root that and understand how it affects your own system and your own consciousness. And then you could also work on uh, uh, creating or maybe maybe sometimes spontaneously we receive sort of a simple or some other way of replic replicating this uh, quality or energy in a way that seems profound to us and that obviously is also wonderful and, and a good way of anchoring uh, a quality I would strongly recommend that be because this exercise is about identifying I would strongly recommend that we do not make a mental process out of it and that we do not make, you know, a lot of colors or symbols or something like that that we have outside of ourselves. It's, it's very fundamental that we root this deeply in our energetic system. So, so relating it to the body is, is uh, maybe not necessarily the only way to do it, but, but a very good way to to work with this, uh, these qualities, I, in my experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, just to sum it up, whenever I I am that quality, I as I try to take a note of where am I registering it in my sensory apparatus, and mm -hmm. in that way, bringing it, uh, embodying it uh, even more. Is that, is Ex that uh, rightly understood? Exactly, Ufe. You obviously have a lot more clarity than me right at the moment. <laughs> uh, okay. Anybody else? Questions? Hands? Anything? People are obviously. Um, Embodying their qualities to such an extent <laughs> that they have forgotten how to how to talk or write, which is all right, I guess. <laughs> yeah, uh, very good assumption. I, I think we'll go with that. With, if nothing else happens, <laughs> you're also welcome to share, and, and it 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 doesn't have to be positive all of it. it it's it's fine. A anything that you need to get out of your chest, you can just bring it on. Okay, I see Martin has a question. Uh, Martin, I can unmute you so you can put your question yourself, if you like. I'll unmute you. Are you there, Martin? Uh, yes, I don't know if you can hear me. We can, we can hear you. We can yes. hear you fine. Thank you. Ah, thank you. Well, mm, no, just uh, just to know your view on on something. Um, is mm -hmm. there um is there a tension is there a, a challenge between uh, exploring this uh, this flow or this you know identifying with qualities and uh, at the same time keeping some balance inner balance or inner tension so as so as to be more intense in the process do you have any 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 thoughts or any views you could share uh, about that yeah yeah sure i think that actually it, it those those two processes uh, complement each other. I, I I don't think that there's a, if I understand understood your your question correctly. I don't think that they sort of you know rule each other out or disturb each other. These processes of identifying with, with our qualities and also trying to be centered and balanced. Uh, I think actually it, it helps us because you you can understand some of these qualities as sort of keys uh, to to 
in the most efficient and easy way to to sort of enter uh, our our deeper levels. Um, let, let me give you an example. For me, uh, for example, I need to be very aware of balance. I can be very unbalanced, but, not, but I can also be very balanced uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a more positive way. So that's a very uh, good way for me to sort of enter my inner being, my soul, as, as, which is a term I usually use about it, is going through the quality of balance. Once I have established balance, I, I seem to be quite, uh, quite close to getting into my, my, my inner being. Does that make any sense? Yes, absolutely. Good. Did I understand your question correctly? Um, yes, I think you have. Um, it's just about exploring a bit more, like, uh, I don't know, uh, the different dimensions of flowing or letting awareness uh, yeah. arise no? out of identification. Yeah, but, but the, there is one part of it. When we, let's say, in our meditation practice, we aim at getting into a very silent place where, where nothing is happening and we're just in our being. Obviously, that does not correspond too well with trying to sense qualities at the same time. So, so there are parts of it that, that might, you know, create tension. So as we become better and better of, of being and working from a very deep and a place where there are no forms, where there are no words or anything like that, these, you know, fo the focus on these qualities might, might sometimes create a bit of a, maybe not directly a blockage, but they, they may, might be a distraction. <laughs> Mm -hmm. All right, for, for my part, uh, that's all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, let's see. I have a question from Julianne. Maybe you would like to pose it your out loud. Julianne, I can unmute you. If you don't say anything, I can just read it out loud, but now I'll, I'll unmute you. Uh, can you, are you there, Julianne? Julie? Maybe she doesn't have a microphone. Okay, so I'll just uh, read it out loud. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, she doesn't have a microphone. Um, My, uh, when energy healer, my mind often drifts off to focus on someone. Uh, she's an energy healer. Her mind often drifts off to someone uh, I am aware needs healing during the self-healing process. I must build in this type of meditation again into my routine. I forget that I too must cleanse, tone, and heal my own energy system. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, very, very good, uh, very useful thought, this one, I think. Yeah, I don't, uh, if there's a question there that I did not respond to, I didn't get it. Uh, I don't, I don't comment. think it's a question, it's more uh, of a comment as a... Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, sounds wonderful. Sometimes uh, that also describes something about you because it is it might be a very prevalent uh, trait of yours if you always think about others that are in need or that you can help. I think that that might be one of the qualities actually. Mm. I can uh, I'll leave a part of the, the question actually. Julie okay. uh, posted it into the, the chat window so you can read it uh, from the beginning. Everybody can read it in the chat window. Yeah. Um, I have a comment. This is Alexander. Um, thank yeah. you very much, Mass, for this beautiful sure. exercise. Uh, I want to share 
I can say like revelation, um, mm -hmm. um, which is not revelation. Like we all know that the uh, opposite science, uh, astrological science, they have constitute the actual, like the same energy. Uh, I kind of mm -hmm. always knew it abstractly, but in this exercise, it came as an impression that actually Aquarius and Leo, uh, how they connected. And through this deep centeredness in own qualities that this exercise gives, like we go into inner self. So it's like this like kind of Leo quality that brings us into the core. But as soon as we come into the core, we come to the place where we all one and we all united. And that's kind of like, you know, like the transcendence from Leo to Aquarius. And actually, this is the pathway from from one sign to another. So, only like going deep into oneself, we go into the service. And through cleansing own deeper self, we can become a server. And through inner understanding of this interconnectedness, we come to the understanding that we are one and we are a group and we all interdependent and interrelated. Mm. Beautiful, beautiful. That was a deep but, uh, impression, definitely. Thank you for sharing, Alexander. Anyone else, Ufa, on the line, doing something, posting something? No, but I mean, I think both Sasha and Juvia has a really good point. Yeah. So it's like, like, like they say in, in when you are in an airplane, if something happens, you should put on your oxygen mask yourself <laughs> first before helping others. Mm -hmm. So keeping your own energy, um, keeping your resources, uh, vitalizing yourself, Cleansing yourself is necessary to do any sort of service work. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, just one short comment as well to uh, what uh, what Alessandra uh, mentioned. We have actually done uh, a, a number of group processes where we work with integrating the more directly with the astrological energies, and I think uh, that that. Epiphany you just had. I, I, I felt that it was a very deep one. Uh, that could be utilized in in, um, in sessions like this. You could you could actively seek out how to find a way to uh, integrate the the opposite signs. I think that that would be practically very doable. Mm -hmm. So I would be definitely open to working with that perspective in. Uh, in the future, in, in, uh, in different ways, if 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 it's an idea worth exploring further. Yes. Okay, Mas. I think um, since nobody else is uh, sharing questions or, or anything, we will mm, go into the full moon meditation. Yeah. All right. Okay, so let me just say thank you very much for for going along with this exercise, and thank you for your your wonderful comments and sharing impressions. <clears throat> let's uh, let's focus on the uh, on the full moon meditation. Uh, I, I won't do a lot of remarks before leading that. I, I'll just say that what we do in the center for for life's inner dimension is that we try to do to lead the meditations a bit differently according to the to the energy climate that we're in. That means that I'll try to do this in a in a in a what we might call Aquarian way. <laughs> Don't judge me too hard on that on that part, but uh, that's uh, that's the aim here. So the way that we do the alignment. We have a number of different ways that we, we do it, but the way we do, especially the personal alignment and the 
sort of group alignment today is is inspired by trying to incorporate the natural energies from Aquarius into the format of this meditation. Okay, so let's get ready for, for another uh, short meditation, or maybe not that short, 20, 25 minutes, maybe even half an hour. Uh, oh, I forgot to ask you, Uwe, do you usually do uh, the seed thought from, from uh, um, Lucy's Trust and, and so on? Do you use those? Um, it's all up to you, Masa, how you want to do that. Okay. There's no strict outline. Okay, thank you very much. All right. Okay. So let's just take a few moments to empty our minds and get ready for meditation. Let's focus our attention in the Ashna Center. A few inches in from the forehead. And we decide to control our point of tension. Now let's drag it into the cave in the middle of the head. Try to sort of sense that there's a magnetic field that we are drawn into in the middle of the head. When we find the place, we sort of click in. Again, we assert that we are in control of our awareness, our attention. It is not controlling us. Now let's direct this attention to the living being that is holding our vital energies, etheric body, if you like. Just acknowledge this being, this deva, energy field. Be grateful of the tireless work that it's doing in our service. And then we ask this part of our system to provide the vitality needed to stay focused during the meditation. We 
a clear, keep a clear channel open to vitality flowing into the point of tension that we uphold. Now let's tune into our emotional energy field and if it seems natural for you. Sense it as a living being with a mind of its own, oh, serving as the the being holding our emotion energy field together. Acknowledge it. And be grateful of his service to us. this part of our being to provide sensory perception, responsiveness, and imagination to the meditation, and we draw those qualities into our point of tension. Tune into our mental sphere, mental energy field. If it seems natural, sense a living being upholding this field in our service. Connect with it, acknowledge it. Be grateful for all that it's doing for us. We ask this part of our system to provide a steady focus and clarity of mind to the meditation. Now having aligned our personality vehicles, let's become present as souls, preferably not go above the head to it, but let it come and identify yourself as souls in your body, in your mind, in your emotions. Just sense that there are 
42 of us doing that at the same time, focused together. And even though we don't know the physical appearance of everyone in the group field, we can acknowledge and sense the presence of each other, visualizing that we form a circle of 42. And just let stream of energy flow from your own heart chakra in front of your chest, acknowledging the soul to the right from you and so on. You see this energy move from heart to heart, connecting us soul to soul. Just sense that a being or center of light is forming in the middle of the group, constituting our group, awareness, group, consciousness, group soul. You can visualize it as a sun in the middle, or as an angelic being, or whatever seems natural for us. Point our attention to this center. I'll just call it a sun to make it easy. Let's just open for a minute to the energies flowing from this group being letting these energies calibrate our own being Now we fix our point of attention to the very center of this group being this image with this point of center. Thus identified as one group consciousness. We sense that many other such group consciousnesses are present around us. Some of them are groups we may know on the physical plane, some of them we don't. All of them share with us a deep push towards making this world a more transparent, a more illuminated, and perhaps most of all a more loving place for everyone. And 
and just like we did as individual souls, we let a stream of soul love flow from us to the group on our right, next to us, visualizing a network around the world that we connect with. And slowly, an even bigger sun, an even vaster being is emerging in the middle, in the center. A group being we may know as the soul of the world. as the heart center of the world, as, as the place where those who are no longer incarnated in human form are present at all times doing their work. Let's state the aim of the purpose of this meditation to align with the energies of Aquarius, to open to inspiration from these further developed master beings in order that we may serve ourselves and our surrounding, surroundings even better than we do already. That is our purpose. See that purpose as an energetic point in the middle of this great big sun, in the center of all these groups we are now connected with around the world. And by an act of will and of love, we merge with this point, we move into this greater sun. In here we sense the presence of greatness around us. Maybe it would be more accurate to say that we have entered the realm of these great minds, these expanded minds, consciousnesses. Let's also have the sense of being focused in the heart center of planet Earth. Just for a minute, let's align with the head center, 
Shambhala, the place where the will of God is known. Or whatever name you call the head center. We also align with the base center, Divine Mother, Mother of the World or whatever. Name you recognize this center by. And for a minute we Steady ourselves in the flow between the head center and the base center, focused here in the heart center on planet Earth. Now we turn our point of attention inwardly, sort of into the center of our group field, group consciousness in the sun. And I'd like to ask us to focus not on a seat thought, but simply on the energies of Aquarius. If you like, we can visualize that they are flowing in through the head center into energetic system of our planet and right into the heart center where we are focused. Let's just be quiet and sense these energies for a couple of minutes.
Now, very slow, gradually, confident that any inspiration that we may already have received or will realize in the coming hours or days will into our mind, we point our focus away from the center, visualize that we sort of turn around, just let these energies of the grace, the light, life energies, the planetary alignment flow through us and out to our surroundings. For a minute, we are mere energy stations. Very slowly, a steady rhythm, a rhythmic motion, we move out of this point of tension, gradually move more and more out into the outer worlds, radiating these energies from Aquarius, fusing them with our love, just letting them reach every corner of this planet, making these energies available for every life form on planet Earth. As we gradually move into more and more dense energies, Let's be aware of grounding the energies, grounding them in ourselves and more through ourselves into the center of the earth, creating a great reservoir of energy that will vibrate. And touch physical life. And let's come fully into our physical vehicle, still radiating. Energies of Aquarius. And as we have the light behind us, flowing through us, looking out into the world, I would like to end by saying the great invocation. Those of you 
you know that. Um, very welcome to say it with me. Try to sense and mean every word. So I will do it slowly in order for that to be possible for us. Concluding with three ohms. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth. doesn't work, I can't remember it in English right now. So maybe, maybe Ufu you could unmute, say, uh, Wendy, and Wendy could do it for us in English. She know. Would you be able to do that, uh, Wendy? Do the great invocation in English? I can just do, do it in. Okay, Alexander can do it. Thank you. Thank you. From the point of light. Within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, Let purpose guide the little wills of men. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center, which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out. And may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth.
Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Alexander. So we got through it with a little help <laughs> from our friends. <laughs> As a final thing, uh, maybe Sasha can just let us know when is the next webinar and what it's about, who it's with. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mass. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. It was very deep meditation. Uh, so, I want to show it on my screen. Um, So, our next webinar will be the Pisces webinar on March 15th. And uh, it will be Sergei Smirnov from Russia, from Moscow, presenting the Moscow Esoteric Group. We'll talk about the nine year cycle that begins this year with the beginning of an astrological year in Aries. And so it's the nine year cycle of 2014 till 2023 and he will talk about what work is to be done by all members of the new group of world servers so please join us on March 15th and together we will meditate about this important work ahead of us this year Thank you very much. And the recording of this webinar will be available on our Facebook page. Um, you can like us on uh, Facebook 2025 initiative, preparing the way. Thank you very much. Thank you all. See you next time. <laughs>